Greetings, shippers. Welcome back. And did you know that General Hux has a cat? Yeah, when I tweeted out that I was doing something that involved a cat, I doubt that a lot of you thought that this is what I was talking about. And Hux doesn't just have any cat, but a cat that goes by the adorable moniker of Millicent. Indeed, at this point, it is not uncommon to come across Millicent in fan art or fix. So how exactly did Millicent come to be? Well, for all of you who are wondering, sit back and enjoy this episode of Headcanon Theatre, the series where we examine headcanons that have become so prominent within fandom that they can indeed be called fanon and have won a place within people's hearts. Okay, some of them might not be fanon, but they're close. And today we have an interesting one, for in the case of Millicent, she may indeed be canon. So before we examine how Millicent came into being, it's important to examine the why. And that explanation can be found in the for some unexpected popularity of General Hux. Now for many fans, this did not occur, and they took Hux as the villainous, fascist sycophant he was meant to be. However, for others, several factors converged that left them not only liking the character, but wanting to know more about him. As there was very little information within the source material, and even Wikipedia was more focused on backstory details than more explicit personality traits. But why did some gravitate towards Hux? Well, for some, it came down to actor likability, as Donald Gleason does have a loyal fan following and is known for playing more adorable and kinder characters, to the point where he was excited to take on the role of Hux so that he could play someone villainous, and his very desire to be as menacing as possible led to the oft gift and very remembered Starkiller bass speech. This fierce machine which you have built, upon which we stand, will bring an end to the Senate, to their cherished fleet. All remaining systems will bow to the First Order and will remember this as the last day of the Republic. On top of that, there were those who felt that his character came across as very competent within the film, more so than the myriad of characters surrounding him. And in terms of archetypes, it made some gravitate to him as the sole person capable of getting anything done amidst the sea of incompetence, even if what he was accomplishing was for the First Order. And some simply like villains and enjoy seeing them more fleshed out, either for their own sakes or for the heroes, as it makes the hero's journey more compelling if they have intriguing antagonists. At least most of the time. Around the time of The Force Awakens, Gleason was also giving many interviews about backstory for the character that were not readily accessible in the film, such as his intense rivalry and history with Kylo Ren. All of this led some fans to seek out more info about their favorite ginger general, and this quest led many to Pablo Hidalgo. Pablo Hidalgo is currently a creative executive at Lucasfilms and a member of Lucasfilm Story Group, and from the beginning of his tenure at Lucasfilms, even before it was official post-acquisition by Disney, Hidalgo has specialized in issues of continuity and canon meaning when fans have a question about canon, they often come to him. It was here that Hux was indeed confirmed to have been sired and parented by abusive father, Commandant Brendel Hux. However, Hidalgo also became the source of a more fun piece of information. While fans wanted to know more about Hux's history, they also want to know more about his interest. Was he a long walks on the beach kind of fellow? And it's here that Hidalgo really shone. Even if it wasn't a direct response to a question about Hux and more of a backhanded dig at Kylo Ren. Hidalgo has a history of being very playful with fans online and engaging with fandom in a very positive way, something that cannot be said for all members of creative staff. So it is often very appreciated by fans when it does occur. In this instance, in February of 2016, he tweeted, the dust Kylo puts his helmet into, litter box for Hux's cat. Millicent, hashtag canon. He followed this with a picture of Millicent. And while these tweets were met positively, it hardly seemed like they were about to start a fandom frenzy. And yet in some ways they did. Fans quickly took to Tumblr, Archive of Our Own, DeviantArt, and various fandom archives to provide the world with works featuring Millicent. She was even given her own bio, which reads, Millicent, the silent companion to the highly respected General Hux of the First Order. Millicent the cat holds the honor of the highest ranking feline in her class. Although her home planet is unknown, her name's meaning, strength, is true to her character. There is a tremendous amount of responsibility that befalls on the most esteemed feline, primarily the provision of comfort and stress relief for her beloved owner. I also like the little data file insert. Millicent has distinctive calls for food, playtime, etc. And Hux knows the differences between them all as any good cat owner should. Now, while there are some questions as to whether or not Millicent actually exists canonically, given the source of the tweet and the use of the actual canon hashtag, she has definitely become a part of fanon, embraced for a variety of reasons. The classic villains with cats trope, the sheer ludicrousness of having a cat roaming the halls of Starkiller Base, and how such a thing would very much detract from the overall menace of the operation of the First Order. And she also matched with the more childish headcanons many had developed for Hux, and by proximity Ren following the film. So for those wondering why they were 
were seeing slash reading about this cat, this is the origin of Millicent, and is not the only Hux headcanon making the rounds. Less prominent and most definitely less official, but still seen, is Hux smoking. It is a character trait that has emerged on multiple fronts. It has emerged in megafix such as Alania's Breaking Point, a work which has garnered its own fan art, something that often occurs with popular fics. It has also been featured in other fics, and especially in modern AUs, wherein Hux is often interpreted as an angsty hipster to match with Ren's more emo persona, as the two are often paired together. And there are of course those drawn to the aesthetic, be it for its villainous appeal, or from a taboo fetishization of coolness that can be applied in a fictional world more readily than reality, where the dangers are justifiably far more prominent, making smoking much more taboo. Huck smoking is also a representation of a phenomenon that often occurs with headcanons that drives them to become fanon, in that people assume that what they are seeing is canon. As fandom is so vast, when people begin to see a certain trait or trope emerge, particularly when it pertains to a specific character over and over again, some assume that it must have come from canon, especially if it's something small and does not diverge overtly from the actual characterization. For many, they may simply assume that they have missed its point of origin, assuming that perhaps it was revealed in a deleted scene, a press tour, an interview, or perhaps a tie-in novel or some other additional source material that they may have missed out on. In this way, as fandom grows, it is possible to lose the origin of particular headcanons, especially if it becomes popular and consequently widespread. Although, there are conversely people who enjoy it because it has come from fandom and is part of a subculture of which they are part. And again, there are some who add to this based on actor photo shoots and alternate film roles. Basically, there are many ways to embrace this headcanon and others, should one so choose. It is also in this way that a character can become more likable in fandom than within canon, as many prefer Hux's fanon characterizations, which also sometimes, albeit less frequently, include being a tea snob or being into yoga. This is a stark contrast to his tightly wound, bordering on sadistic, also longing for authority canon characterization, though some would argue that these additions are only possible because some seem more to the portrayal than that, or are building upon it. It is also the case that some encounter this fanon version of Hux first, as sometimes fandom can precede contact with the source material itself. So some approach the work with this version of Hux already in mind, and are hence looking for clues either consciously or subconsciously that validate this more fun, relatable, if still as villainous version. Now, of course, just because something becomes fanon does not mean every fan has to accept or like it. There are some who find all of this frivolous, and some who simply did not have an affinity for or do not like the character, and are not interested in interacting with expanded versions. And of course, as mentioned in Kylux, some find the more humanizing elements of Hux undesirable, as they feel that Hux is a Nazi amalgam and so should not be granted any likable traits for fear of romanticization. Though to that, some would argue that additional nuance does not negate the character's actions. And of course, as always, some feel it is simply fiction and that one can take a character who may be heinous within canon and do whatever they like with them within the fandom, using them to explore as many issues as they like, be they fluffy or dark. And many feel this way particularly pertaining to Hux's headcanons, as many seem to be an attempt to have a much more fun and lighthearted experience, even when they do appear in a more dark fic. However, as always with fandom, opinions vary. It very much depends upon one's viewpoint and where they are coming from. Are you guys fans of Millicent the Cat? What about Hux himself? And how did you feel about his characterization within The Last Jedi? I know a lot of people didn't quite like it, but what did you guys think? And of course, some people simply don't care for him as a character at all, and if you feel that way, feel free to leave it down there too. As always, all opinions welcome, just respectful. I hope you guys enjoyed, I just wanted to do something a bit more lighthearted after how heavy Kylex ended up being. So I went for the internet's favorite thing, cats. Lots and lots of cats. In this case, one cat, but one cat is enough. Also, I'm not sure exactly what happened here. Believe it or not, this was supposed to be a regular casual look and somehow it ended up like I was on my way to a club in the 80s and I'm okay with it. Here, see, see it with it off. Oh, you can see how tired I look. There we go. Look at it. Oh, look at the glory. Do you guys know of any popular fanons slash headcanons that you'd like me to cover? Let me know down below. I look forward to reading all of your comments and I'll see you guys next time. This has been Shipper's Guide to the Galaxy. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Special thanks to all my patrons' names on the side and that monthly video is coming very soon and so is the new vote for February. Please follow me on social media to keep up to date with what's coming up next. And as always, stay tuned for there are as many ships out there as there are stars in the sky.